name is Christine. My name is Brian. I'm Ronnie. My name is Kristen. I'm Matt. My name's Chris. And this is my story. This is my story. This is my story. And this is my story. This is my story. And this is my story. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Glad to be here. Yeah. I'm Brian Brown. I'm the discipleship pastor. What a blessing it is to be here this morning. Hi, there you are. Now I get to see you. Before that, all I saw was light. Now I get to see you. Hey, are you guys enjoying this sermon series we're doing? This is my story? Yes? I don't know about you guys. I'm loving it. I'm loving this, uh, these, these sermons, these testimonies. I uh, love the Word of God, but it's so cool to see how it is working in people's lives, how the Lord has worked in people and transformed people. So cool. And brothers and sisters, I got I to gotta throw this out there, man. Uh, when I was working on this sermon and putting things together, I can't tell you how many times I had some tears uh, putting things together. Whenever you see Kristen's testimony, you will understand without a doubt. Uh, but here's, here's the cool part is I am blessed with the honor to be able to not only share God's word this morning, but to also be able to share part of her story. So that is truly an honor uh, to be able to be a part of that. So without further ado, uh, here is Kristen's testimony. Cue it up. 39 years old, but really the last year of my life is the only year I have truly lived. My name is Kristen and this is my story. So at the age of 14, I started drinking alcohol, smoking marijuana. Um, by 15, I had started dabbling in harder drugs. I had a baby at the age of 16 and after I had her, I downward spiraled because he was cheating on me, wasn't coming home. I couldn't rely on him for anything. So I went into a depression and I, I started to use more. And when she was one, him and I split up. And then I was uh, really not doing good at all. Even as wonderful as my daughter was, I, I just, I was always empty. I, I could never find anything that made me feel whole. So I was looking for it in all the wrong places. And then I married a man when I was 24. And uh, we were married for 10 years. I got pregnant a second time and he walked out on me when I was six months pregnant and he never came home. So when that happened, um, at the same time, I had a best friend and he was missing and they found his body eight months later. My husband was gone. I had a brand new baby. I was given Percocets from the doctor and just the concoction of heartache, depression, the medicine, I was immediately addicted to opiates. And then I was introduced to heroin. I had another friend who was murdered. He was shot 12 times. So I was grieving really bad. All the while without a job, I had to pay all the bills. It was just, it was very overwhelming and the heroin numbed everything. So when I did the heroin, all of a sudden I'm taking care of a baby, I'm cleaning house, I feel nothing. I'm whistling and I, I felt good. So the addiction was right there. I lost more friends due to drugs, alcohol, and criminal lifestyle. So I felt completely alone and I got worse. I did more drugs and I did more drugs and I held on to the past, to their pictures. I just kept looking backwards so I couldn't move forward. It got so bad that I lost my children in DFS custody. I, uh, I lost my mind. Um, I had no sense of reality. Finally, it got so bad to the point that I was living under a bridge in St. Louis City. Through all of this, my mother always prayed for me. And my mother is so good. She, she always would take me back in and tell me about Jesus and do a Bible study. Um, I would get a Bible study in here and there every once in a while with my mom. And it was always so profound. But I was looking for my identity in people, places, and things. One day I called my mom and she actually came and she picked me up. It was really hot out. I was starving. I was in dirty clothes. She picked me up. She took me home. I took a shower. I sat in a rocking chair and I just cried. Like, I just, there was no hope. I, I could not by any means get myself together at all. And all of a sudden, it's like I'm in a train that goes under a tunnel where like there's light so it flashes bright then dark, bright then dark, bright then dark, and it's going really fast. It literally took Jesus to come down 
It's like, it's like he literally kissed me on the forehead and, and I woke up. It was so, so profound that people's heads were spinning. Like my entire family, we were, they were just all in shock. We were all blown away. And in that second, he delivered me from addiction. He gave me self-worth. He gave me everything in one second. The, the revelation of the Lord revealed to me of how I'm speaking death instead of life. Everything coming out of my mouth was death. Um, instantly changed the things that I watched, the things that I listened to. I was so deceived in, in substances and, and needing medicine and, and things to, to, to live and to make it. And literally, all I need is, is Him, His Holy Spirit. And, and not only did he, do, did he do all that, but He gave me a career. Every job I ever had before I hated, I would look at the clock every two minutes. He gave me the career of painting I love to paint, and it's just, it's amazing. He's given me a, an income. Um, not only am I providing for myself, I also take care of, of all of my children. I help with my grandchildren. I help take care of my mother, who's always took care of everyone else, and I just, did everything to learn about him, to reprogram my brain, my way of thinking. And after a few months of that, I come out of that and I, I went into my mom's room one day and I said, Mom, I need people. I need a church. I need to go, uh, I, I need to learn. I, I need a family. I need a support team. So she said, I know exactly where to take you. And so she brought me here to connect. Um, the day I came here, I knew that I was home and it's just getting better and better and better and God is so good that I cannot believe I wasted all that time without him. I cannot believe it, but I do believe that it was all for a reason. It wasn't very long and he already restored my children to me. My children can say, remember mommy before you knew Jesus and you know now how you, you have Jesus. So it's a testimony to them, it's, it's something for them to know, and, and they know that Jesus is real. They know what I was like before. They 100% they see the difference. They know that that was God. I am grateful for the fact that I know how bad it was and how bad it can get and how good God is. So every day, I really feel like I'm living on fire and in gratitude because he is so good and I know that. So I'm grateful that I seen how dark it can get and even then he took care of me and it could have been way worse. But I'm so grateful. There's no medium. It is, it is God and Satan. It is black or white. He's so good and I know the difference. My name is Kristen and this is my story. Mm -hmm. Is that awesome or what? That's awesome. I'm seeing some, uh, some hands wiping tears away. Brothers and sisters, that happened to me quite a bit when I was watching this video and prepping the sermon for today. What a blessing. So today, we're gonna be, if you want to turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2, we're going to be looking there here in a few minutes, or you can follow along on the screens overhead. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about, uh, the big idea is three M's. We're going to be talking about mess, message, and messenger. Everybody say mess. Message. Messenger. 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 That's right. We're going to talk about these three things, and we're also going to discuss in each of these categories. We're going to be talking about what the Scripture says about these. Kristen, as our example or as an illustration, we're also going to see how this relates to us in each of the three areas. So with that, let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you, Jesus. Uh, for the fact that we have Kristen's message. We have her testimony. Thank you, Lord, that you have spoke through her. Lord, you have worked in her and transformed her, and she has shared that with us. And Lord, we just give you the glory for the things you've done in her life and in her heart. Continue to speak through her message. Lord, speak through me as I share the things you've laid on my heart through the Spirit uh, to share about this and about the Scripture and how this relates to us, uh, every one of us here in this room and also online. Lord, just guide us and speak to us. Lord, just we pray that we can glorify you in everything and every way that we draw closer to you and learn from you. And Lord, we'll give you the glory. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so first thing we're going to talk about is mess. Everybody say mess. That's right. 
Now, before we jo- jump into the scriptures, I want to throw this out there. Some of the things that I'm going to be talking about in the message uh, you didn't see on the video. I, I talked with Kristen and kind of got some more of the background stuff. Uh, also, I asked her, I said, well, what were some of the key verses of scripture that the Lord used to work in your heart through this transformation? And it was pretty cool because she gave me a whole page of verses. And Ephesians 2, the first part of Ephesians 2, had a big star next to it. So that means this was, this was even gooder, right? All of scripture is good, but this was even gooder. Yeah, so that's why we're using this. And of course, as I read through the scripture and I compare that with Kristen's testimony, oh yeah, beautiful combination here, brothers and sisters. So with that being said, let's jump in and see what God's word says about the mess of mankind. Ephesians 2, starting verse 1, it says, And you were dead in in trespasses and sins in which you once walked. So here, Paul is talking to the church in Ephesus, and he's telling them, look, he's telling them who they were. Uh, before they were believers. He said, you were dead in trespasses and sins. That's kind of, those are a couple of Christian words that we use. What those truly mean are is a sin is where we fall short. We miss the mark. In other words, it's something we say, do, or think that is against God or his will for us. Now, I'm going to kind of throw in a little bit deeper in the fact of the types of sin. There's actually two types. There's what we call sins of commission is when we don't do, is whenever we do what God tells us not to do. There's also sins of omission, in other words, when we don't do what God has called us to do. So just kind of throw that out there. If we don't do what he's called us to do, what is that? That's sins of omission. That's right. A lot of times we, we, we kind of think about the things, I'm not supposed to do that. But how often do we think of, man, I'm really supposed to do this. Sometimes we got to think about that because a lot of times we just kind of, I know I do. But, you know, we all, we all kind of struggle with that. So here we're talking about the last part of that little section, talking about how uh, these are the things they once walked in. When we walk in something, that means we do it continually. We're continually walking. It's our lifestyle. It's the way we're doing things. And he's talking about those things that they did, shortcomings that they did walking regularly in their life. Next part of Scripture says, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, uh, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. Right here, brothers and sisters, we should not be surprised at the craziness in the world right now. Shouldn't be surprised. Why? Because what do we see right here in this passage? We see that uh, the course of the world is followed, is, is actually led by Satan. Prince of the power of the air. Jo- uh, Jesus even says in the Gospel of John that Satan is the ruler of this world. Now, don't get me wrong. Jesus is allowing him to do what he's doing. And he can stop anybody, anytime, anything, anywhere. Amen? He's got the power to do that. But he is allowing Satan to do what he's doing right now uh, in this world. So we shouldn't be surprised in the craziness of the world. But at the same time, at the same time, look at this next part. It says, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of our body and the mind. Right here we see that it's not only Satan and demons and things working within us and around us. What also do we have right here? Passions of our flesh. Our fleshly passion is to do the things against God, is to do the things against his will, carrying out the desires of the body and mind. Our body and mind uh, follows the things of the world by nature, as we see in the next part, and we were by nature children of wrath. Brothers and sisters, you ever think about us before, I mean, just by nature, children of wrath? You ever think to yourself, man, I'm a child of wrath? It's kind of scary, isn't it? But the truth is, that's who we are before Christ. Children of wrath by nature, like the rest of mankind. And that doesn't mean just me or you. That means every bit of mankind. That's where we are as mankind. So now let's look at Kristen's mess. So we we see the things that we, from her testimony, we see that Kristen said she was empty. She was looking to feel whole. She was looking to three places. She was looking to people, places, and things to fill that emptiness. She tried filling this emptiness with drugs, and she mentioned alcohol, she mentioned marijuana, she mentioned harder drugs, prescription medications. And here's the thing, she got more depressed, and what did she do after she got more depressed? She used more drugs. It's a slippery slope that gets steeper and steeper, brothers and sisters. Here's the thing, alcohol and even prescription medications, when they're used uh, when they're used incorrectly, are gateways. They're gateways to leading to other drugs. We see here uh, that she went to heroin. She, after she got the heroin, she said that the heroin actually numbed all her pain. 
She actually got things done. She felt good. She actually had a sense of temporary euphoria, which is one of the reasons that so many people are into heroin nowadays, brothers and sisters. Here's the thing. She said after that she lost numerous friends to drugs and criminal life. Addictioncenter.com says that almost 21 million Americans have at least one addiction to substance. 21 million. That's a lot. And that's at least one. A lot of times, for those of us who've been there, usually we're addicted to more than one substance. Because usually, just, in, just as we saw in Kristen's testimony, usually one substance leads to another, leads to another, because you need more. You think you need more. You desire more. Check this, check this stat out, brothers and sisters. About 494,000, 494,000 Americans over the age of 12. It's awful young. Over the age of 12 are regular heroin users. It's over the age of 12. Talk about craziness. Talk about how young it is hitting our nation. We all know someone who has been affected by heroin, whether it be us, whether it be those within our family, those close to us, neighbors, loved ones, neighbors, or, I mean, uh, people we work with, whatever. <clears throat> We've all been impacted by people that have had this. Brothers and sisters, I can tell you that whenever the Lord first called me into ministry, he called me uh, to preach. The first, three ser- the first three funerals services that I did were because were drug-related. The first one was a guy who was under the influence, and he was at a party, and he was playing the game called Russian Roulette, and he lost. The second one was out cruising around with his buddies. They were using heroin. He overdosed. His buddies that were also using heroin with him, they panicked. They dumped him in his mom's driveway. That's where she found him. Two weeks later, one of the the brothers from our church that we were at before, his wife called me up and said that his his son had had overdosed on heroin. So I go to the house, and I'm sitting there with, with the dad, sitting there with him, praying with him, talking to him. And after a little bit, I happened to notice that behind him, on the, on the front porch, under a sheet, was his son's body. I beat the corner there. Brothers and sisters, this is real. It can't get any more real than this. It's all around us. It's right next door. It's within our homes. These things are real that we're talking about today. I know a lot of times we don't see it. We don't think about it. It's real. One of the, heroin is one of the hardest substances for people to get away from. See, drugs did not make her feel whole. She felt alone. She even held on to the past. She also tried filling this emptiness with relationships. We saw that she had friends. She had a boyfriend. She had a baby. She even got married, and after that, she had another child. Now, as we see in her testimony, where did using them to make her feel whole get her? We see that her friends were dying because of the drugs and because of the lifestyle. They were getting killed. We saw that the boyfriend and the husband both walked out on her. We saw that her children were taken away by DFS, so she lost them. We also see uh, that at that point in Kristen's mess, she had lost her job, her husband, her children, her mind. She had even lost her sense of reality. She had lost everything. Literally everything and was living under a bridge. She said, and this is her quote, she said, there was no hope. She said, I could not by any means get myself together at all. That's where Kristen got in her mess, trying to seek things on her own. Trying to fill that void with the things of the world. Now, brothers and sisters, what's your mess? What's the mess that you've got going on? Are you looking at the same thing? Are you looking at people, places, and things like Kristen did? Are you looking at possessions? Do you struggle with materialism? Are you looking at status, pride? It's all about me getting better, getting power. Is it about sex? Is it about failed marriages? Does your mess include you being wronged, whether it be abused sexually, verbally, or physically? Brothers and sisters, What does or what did your mess look like? Because here's the thing, brothers and sisters, we are all, we've all had a mess. We all might be in a mess. 
and we're, all of us are going to be in a mess one of these days. No way around it. Have you been able to get yourself together on your own? I guarantee you every one of us in this room have tried. I know I did for years. We try to do these things on our own. So we've talked about the mess. Now let's talk about the message. Everybody say message. 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 Awesome. Now we're talking about the message of Jesus, first of all. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. Yes. E- Ephesians 2, starting verse 4. We're not, we're not going to make it very far, but God. Everybody say, but God. but God. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm reading Scripture and I see but God, I get excited. You know why? We have just talked about the craziness. You guys ready to get this? You guys ready to get crazy? Yes, let's get crazy. We talked about the craziness of the world of us has fallen our mess. Now, but God. But God, that's what I'm talking about. Let's see what he's going to do next. Being rich in mercy. I love these having these simple definitions in, 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 uh, instilled in my brain. Mercy, simple definition, is when God protects us from what we deserve. The fact is, look, brothers and sisters, we have failed. We have turned against him. We actually deserve to be separated from him. We deserve his wrath. We deserve uh, to be separated from him because of what we've done. But in his mercy, he protects us from what we do deserve. Amen? Next, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, uh, was talking about that, when we had our past, when we had our sins that we were talking about, that we were, we were in, no matter what our mess is or was, brothers and sisters, he went to the cross for you, for me, for Kristen. Amen? Amen. No matter what our mess was, is, or will be, brothers and sisters, he went to that cross for us. He, he made us alive together with Christ by grace. Here's another simple definition. Grace is the gift from God we don't deserve. So that is the gift from him that we do not deserve. Also, it says, you have been saved. I love, jump to verse 8. It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. Everybody say, by grace, by grace. Through, faith, through faith, you have been saved. Brothers and sisters, when we put our faith and trust in Jesus, we have been saved. Not by works, which we're going to talk about in a second, but by a gift. What was a gift from God? Or what was grace? A gift from God that we don't, what? Deserve. That's right. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve it, but it's a gift from him. And this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God. There's that grace, not as a result of works so that no one can boast. Brothers and sisters, when we put our faith and trust in Jesus, we realize who he is the Son of God, the Savior, the Messiah. We put our faith and trust in him, we will be redeemed. He will make us a new creation in Christ. You see, the Lord brought his message to Kristen through one of his messengers, which was her mom. See, her mom was a messenger. As a messenger, was praying with Kristen, sharing Jesus with her. Was doing Bible studies together. Not bubble studies, Bible studies together. They were, he was taking care of her, taking care of her physical needs, giving her food. He let her get a shower, giving her clothing. Then Jesus revealed himself to her. She said that he delivered her from addiction, gave her self-worth, gave her everything. Everybody say everything. everything. She told me that, after, she, that after, she, uh, after this, she dove into the word. Brothers and sisters, you want to talk about getting the revelation of God. It's right here. You want the revelation of God, come to it. Open the pages. It's not out of your reach. I'm telling you, if you don't have a Bible right now, take one underneath the seat in front of you, behind you. Take them with you. We'll get new ones. If you don't have God's holy word with you, take it with you today. Take it with you. We will replace those. But she opened, she got the revelation from God, not only from the word, but also as he moved in her through the spirit. Brothers and sisters, he would do the same thing to you, moving in you. She also filled her time with watching sermons and listening to sermons and Bible studies. She was continuously seeking Christ with her time. See, God, by the Holy Spirit and by his word, continued to reveal himself to her. Her relationship with him continued to grow. He also revealed to her who she was, a daughter of God. Is that awesome or what? He also revealed 
to her that her words and her actions were bringing forth death instead of life. He gave her the strength to change her speech, to change the things she was watching, to change what she was listening to. He would do the same thing for us. As we become his, as we put our faith and trust in him, brothers and sisters, there's that C word called conviction. He will guide us and direct us from that. I know in my walk of faith, he would lay things on my heart. Praise the Lord, a lot of times he would do them one thing at a time. Oh, yeah, I should be doing that. Better get away from that. Okay, oh, oh, got away from that. Oh, wait a minute, what's this? Ah, oh, okay, there's, in that, there's that one. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's got to go. But with Kristen, we see that he laid those things on her all, all at one time. Right there, boom. You see, Christ had restored her. He restored her. He gave her a career. Not only something that she got to do to make money, but she loves it. Gave her a career. Supply, he supplied it for her financially. Enough that she's able to help her own family, her daughters, uh, her grandkids, her mom. She's able to help with her mom. He also restored the relationship that she had with her oldest daughter and with her two grandchildren. Restored those. And brothers and sisters, the Lord actually gave her back her kids. The Lord worked through Mighty, a mighty way and got her her kids back. She's got full custody of her two younger kids. Is that awesome or what? The Lord will truly, will truly redeem us when we come to him, when we follow him. I'm, not ta- I'm talking spiritually, of course, but also physically. He will redeem us, just as we saw uh, he, did, he did for Kristen in her life. You see, Jesus also showed her his calling for, for us uh, to be committed to a church family. To, to go together, to learn together, to grow together, you know, to have each other as a support team, to reach out to each other. Her mom brought her where? To Connect Church. What a coincidence. Brought her here. What do we do at Connect Church? We connect. No pun intended, right? We connect here, man. Check this out. Once, once she believed in the message of the gospel, by God's grace, she became a new creation in Christ Jesus. And he completely transformed her. Now, the exciting part is, now Kristen's message consists of the mess of her past and how she's a new creation in Christ because of God's saving grace in the message of the gospel of Jesus. Amen? So now her message is not only her mess, but it's also the message of Jesus Christ. So now her message includes his message. And brothers and sisters, with him as her strength, she has just not. Re- she just recently celebrated 14 months clean from heroin, huh? And I know she gives him the glory, brothers and sisters. What is your message? What is your message? Has he delivered you from a, from substance abuse? Has he restored your health? Has he restored relationships in your life? Has he restored you from abuse? Has he delivered you from materialism or any other type of hurt, habit, or hang-up? What is or has been your hurt, habit, or hang-up that he has delivered you from? What is he working on you for now? What do you still need him to deliver you from? Here's the thing, brothers and sisters. If you are a believer in Jesus, take your mess from your past along with the message of Jesus and how he, how you are a new creation in Christ, that's your message. That is your message. And here's the thing. Every single one of us have a message. There's not a single one of us who don't have a message. So now what do we do with this message? And that brings us to our third M, which is messenger. Everybody say messenger. messenger. That's right. Look at Ephesians 2 verse 10. It says, for we are his workmanship. He made us, created in Christ Jesus for good work. I love that phrase there, in Christ Jesus. To define that means once we put our faith and trust in Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes within us. We are in him. Scripture says we are in him because we are part of his body. We are his body on the earth right now because the Holy Spirit is in us. We are the temple for the Holy Spirit. So once we become in Christ, we are his for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. What do we walk in? We walk in good works brothers and sisters. Here's the thing. If your message consists of you putting your faith in Jesus and being in Christ Jesus, as we just talked about, when we put our faith in him, you are called to be a messenger, to share your message with those around you, every single one of us. 
The Lord has allowed you to go through things, put you through things for the purpose of being able to share that with the world, to be able to share that with others, to be able to help others, especially those who the Lord brings into your path and into your, into your life that have gone through the same things that are going through the things that you've gone through. Right there is an open door, brothers and sisters. Walk through that. Kristen, as a messenger, we see from her testimony, we see in her family that, uh, that her family's in shock. She said their heads are spinning, right, at the new creation that she is because of Jesus Christ. We see that even with her kids, which is really cool, her kids were even talking about her before and after, talking about how, how she was before and after, and now the fact, even giving Jesus the glory for the fact of the changes in her. Amen? That's even her kids realizing that. We also see here in our church how uh, Kristen is sharing her message. What did we just watch this morning? Her testimony. She shared it with all of us, brothers and sisters. She is part of our leadership team and our Celebrate Recovery group here on Tuesday nights. Uh, you come on Tuesday nights for uh, any hurt, habit, or hang up, you'll see Kristen here wearing a shirt like this probably. Also, she serves here on Sunday mornings. She's in the Sunday morning rotation, and she's also plugged into a connect group on Wednesday nights. Uh, Lord, you just see how she is a messenger. She's sharing her message. She's also sharing it where she lives, where she works. When she's out running around, she's sharing her message with those that the Lord brings into her life wherever she goes. Brothers and sisters, now what about you as a messenger? Are you sharing your message with those that the Lord has brought into your life? Are you sharing that message? Which M are you today? Are you in a mess? Are you in a spot where it looks like there's no way out? Brothers and sisters, today you have heard the message of Jesus Christ. You have heard what he has done. You have heard that you can be saved by what? Saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. You can do that today. If you haven't put your faith and trust in him, he will save you today. Brothers and sisters, are you ready for that today? If you haven't done that. If you have been transformed by the message of Jesus Christ, are you living out your calling as a messenger for Jesus Christ? Everybody say messenger. If you are, praise the Lord, keep it going. Keep sharing it. Keep sharing that message. If you are not, why not? Why not share that message? Brothers and sisters, if you have not put your faith and trust in Jesus, it is time to come to him. For those of you who have put your faith in him, yet you're not being obedient to him as a messenger, it's time for us to follow that calling. And I'm going to say this. If you say, ah, one of these days I intend to come to him. Or one of these days, you know, I intend to start sharing my message with those around me, sharing my testimony, how he's transformed me. There's a problem with both of these scenarios, brothers and sisters. Intention will never get you to your destination. Only your direction will get you to your, de to your destination. Are you moving toward him today? Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you, Jesus, for this message. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the revelation of your word through the Bible. Thank you for Kristen sharing her, her message. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for her sharing her mess. Lord, that example that we got to see. Lord, but also even beyond that, Lord, how your message, how you transformed her. Lord, you made her a new creation in Christ. Lord, we thank you, Lord, how you showed us how we fit into this, Lord, how this affects us. Lord, what is our mess? Lord, I ask you to move in every single one of us here today. God, move in us. Lord, for those of us who are here who are still in our mess, who have never answered the call of your message, Lord, today there's no excuse. Everyone here, everyone online has heard your message. Lord, what you did on the cross for us of how we can be saved by grace, a gift from you, through faith, us putting our faith and trust in you, trusting in you as the Son of God, you as the Messiah, you as the one who make us a new creation. Lord, we've all heard it, your message. Lord, I pray for every single one of us here who are believers, who have been had our lives transformed by your message. Lord, I pray that you move in us, Lord, that we will share that message. Lord, that we will share our message, your message, 
with the world around us, that we would share that with everyone. Lord, I ask you to convict us when we don't. Lord, help us to see those doors, those areas where you're calling us to share. Somebody who you may bring into our life that talks or shares about something that you had, that we have gone through, that you have allowed us to go through, that you've carried us through, that you've delivered us from. Lord, that we may share our message and your message with them. Lord, I pray that you move in us today that we don't hesitate. Lord, that we follow your calling on us and that we move towards you. Lord, intention is good, but our, but our direction is where we need to be going, and that is to you. We love you, Lord. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.